feel free to do that. Today, you're in for an absolute treat. You're gonna be in conversation with Janice M. Wine, with Rhoda Fisher in conversation with Janice, and with Morning Fisher also in conversation with Janice. If you um, want to show your appreciation for any thing that hits you in the poetry world, you get an opportunity to click. So get ready to click, get those fingers going. You are, we ask, request that you put yourself on mute, but at the end of the poems, you will have the option to unmute and we can hear your clicks and your appreciation just to give encouragement and um, to show your understanding and appreciation really for what you've heard. So the reason that you're here today is to speak with Janice, to be in conversation with Janice. Janice is an international prize winner for her poetry. She has her work held in the poetry archives and she is ready today to bring the flavour, to bring her words that give life inspiration to us. So let's get ready to snap, crackle and pop for Janice M. Y. Who am I? Daughter of Trevor and Carmen, sister to Jeffrey, auntie to Donovan and Gabrielle, cousin to many, friend to some, acquaintance to a few, a Londoner by birth, a Jamaican by heritage. Ooh, ooh, appendix day. I don't like to be boxed in, give me room, give me time. A product of my environment, yet still trying to swim against the tide. Got my fears, but to quote a friend, trying to feel the fear and do it anyway. I used to like white, now I appreciate red. I never liked coffee, now, according to some, I'm addicted. Running for the bus was a no-no, yet I have run 26.2. Usually quiet, but if you hit the right button, you will enjoy surround sound. A lyricist with pages to fill, acquainted with pain, restoring my joy, living a life prescribed, but trying to draw outside the lines. Jack has many trades, one day I'll master a few. A contradiction in terms, yet easily read if you have the key. Full of emotion, seen only by a few. A deep thinker, a deep feeler, yet content to go with the flow. If it matters, I'll speak. If it doesn't, I won't. Love the spontaneous, but need a rhythm, a framework to scaffold this journey I'm on. Seeking my identity, longing to be known, keeping at arm's length, but open to being drawn close. A narrative still unfolding, unsure of myself, but sure of him. A work in progress is promised to complete, a unique expression of his love, a vessel for his service, trying to live his truth. To use a turn of phrase of my people, a me that, or at least in part. Hello, everybody, and welcome to In Conversation. Thank you so much for joining with me. I just really appreciate you giving up your time this evening to be in conversation with me. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, those of you that have already got the book and stuff will know that I am looking at poems that have come out of dialogue with different people and also things such as things I've seen online that have just kind of spoke to me or in something I'm doing and it has all kind of poured into this book. I'm going to share three sections of poetry so hopefully you'll get different flavours from each and I'm going to continue on now with O oh Crumbs. O oh Crumbs. Crumbs adorning the corners of my mouth, flaky deliciousness scattered across my chest. If anyone saw me, they'd think I'm a disgrace. But in this moment, I don't care. There must surely be a time and place where you can just let the crumbs fall. Oh, crumbs. Oh, I like that with a click. Okay, so I'm going on to Soulmate and the Fallacy. 
Soulmates, the fallacy. I blame Disney. The type cast fairy tales, casting spells on the already hypnotized into thinking that love is a wish upon a star, as opposed to the clothes on the floor, the toothpaste squeezed in the middle, the endless streams of mindless trivia, the morning breath kisses and late night cookies, the late stage bare belly, the overcooked dinners, the peeling wallpaper and exposed wiring, the cupboards left open, the loo roll on backwards, the snoring concerti and hair confetti, the left with no covers and sandpaper rubs, master mask conflabs, the ivy of indifference, the whodunit mysteries, the I feel good, <laughs> lacking sugar and spice, at the turning out of the lights, your dreams come true. Soulmates, the fallacy. Some people have really had a bit of a laugh um, at that. Soulmates, the fallacy made them laugh, as they have with crumbs. And I should have said that with oh crumbs, I literally was sitting there. I'd finished eating a croissant and there were crumbs on my T-shirt. Really a bit of a disgrace. And I was doing some daily poems and I was like, I'm going to write about it. And that's how oh crumbs came about. And now I'm gonna let you see a recording of something called Commission Granted. Yes, you, Lou Roll on Backwards. Is that because you know Lou Roll on Backwards? Are you guilty? I'll like to add you later. So basically, Commission Granted, I shared this piece that you're gonna see recorded at a poetry community here in Indonesia in Yogyakarta called Unveiled um, Poetry. And there were people like Steffi, who I know is hoping to join today from Undisputed poetry and Carissa and I have to have a shout out to them because Indonesia is where much of my creative rediscovery took place and I think if I hadn't had that in conversation may maybe not have happened or at least not yet so here we go with permission granted To what? To not take the lemon. And make lemonade. Permission to not. Be okay. Permission to give my. Best for the rest and not put it forward. Permission granted to not put on my happy face. Allow me to be sad. Sad in itself is not. Hi, we're just having a couple of technical um, hitches with this, but we'll be back with you in a moment. Permission granted. Permission to what? To not take the lemons and make lemonade. Permission to not be okay. Permission to give my best for the rest and not put it forward. Permission granted. To not put on my happy face. Allow me to be sad. Sad in itself is not bad. Sad is one of the beautiful emotions at our disposal, given to us so that we can express how we feel in any given moment. It is natural to feel sad sometimes. So, permission granted to not turn my frown upside down. <laughs> permission granted to not find the lesson in every circumstance. Permission to say, this sucks. Not everything has good in it. There is not always a teachable moment. Sometimes things just suck. <laughs> Permission granted to not join you on the mountaintop. Times in the valley can be just as valuable, just as valid. 
Maybe the valley is the place where I will be restored. The safe place where my tears can freely flow for the loss is felt. The place where the unsaid can finally be said. Maybe I don't need to see things from another perspective. I can see them just fine from down here. Permission granted to not move on. Let me be, let me process. Let me figure out how to live another day with this thing forever a part of my story. There are some things in life that cannot be erased as if they never existed. Your well-intended encouragements and suggestions could possibly be more about you than about me. Because you cannot contend nor comprehend the not strongly. Currently on pause, you want me on fast forwards, but give me time and I'll be the one to press play again. Permission granted. From who? From me to me. Huh. From me to you. From you to you. Permission granted. Permission granted. So, thank you for everyone's clicking. I love that. And you can find that online as well. Now, I don't want to just be me talking. I invited some people who have been a part of this process and contributed. And right now, it's time to be in conversation with Maureen Fisher. And she is the person, if you've seen the book cover, responsible for this beautiful, beautiful book cover. Um, so I just want to invite um, Maureen to come and be part of the conversation and tell you about how we ended up, because it's a collaborative thing, we ended up with this cover. And I should say, Maureen is my cousin, um, two sisters children, she is a techie, she is a creative of all sorts, she's a cousin, sister, older sister. So over to you Maureen, let them know how we ended up with this cover. Hi, hi, good afternoon, good evening, uh, good morning everybody. Um, uh, congratulations first, Janice, on uh, the publication of your uh, first poetry book. Um, brilliant. I know it's been um, sort of years in the making, yeah. but also uh, big props for getting it done um, really quickly in the end. Uh, yeah. but, you know, um, so uh, we had we had taught. I'd seen um, uh, Janice was putting out so much content on social media and um, you know, as a photographer, uh, looking at stuff, you're kind of like, yeah, you know, let me try and see if I can contribute and uh, collaborate with Jan on some stuff. So I suggested to her that we do a branding shoot. I think this was like at the tail end of last year. And we finally got to do it um, in February, um, went down and spent some time. And with a branding shoot, you're looking at um, kind of like the person that you're, that's the subject of the shoot. You're looking at their personality. You're looking at the things that go into making them who they are and their creative practice, what it is. Uh, and so I was, I was really, um, you know, wanting to do it around where she lived and her space where she created her work. Uh, I know there was a couple of places in London that we talked about going, going up to, to do some work amongst them, like the South Bank. Yeah. Um, One of my favorite so, of London people, just letting you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but we ended up actually doing Janice at the time was staying in Clapham. So it's a lovely eclectic, like, you know, small village in a big city. So we did some work at our home and then, um, one of the mornings we, we went up to, we went and had breakfast at a place called Brickwoods, um, which is a, you know, lovely spot in, in good coffee. Janice, Janice and I both have a coffee, um, slight addiction. Um, so, uh, yeah, tiny addiction um so we went, had breakfast and some really nice coffee and um you know we took a lot of we took a lot it was really early morning it was quite peaceful tranquil um and we took a lot of pictures of janice in that space um but i think she had gone to um go and like order our next round of coffees i think and uh i just looked at the space that around us and there was some empty space which you know, I was just looking at places where it'd be good to, to do some focal images. And this uh, spot, um, these chairs, this table, we just, we took some of there with, with, with her not in it. And then we took some with her in it. Um, it was just, it was calm. It was tranquil 
tranquil, peaceful, like very much like Janice, you know, her personality is very calm and very even. So I just felt like that kind of um, evoked her spirit, if you like. So, yeah. Um, and then, you know, we had a, we had a, a, you know, a couple hundred pictures. I think I sent Jan Janice about 80 to pick from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, Janice, you, this one spoke to you, right? Yeah, this one spoke to me. And actually, I should say that when we were doing this brand shoot, Maureen, as she kind of touched on, just wanted to see how she could contribute, not only as my cousin who supports me and stuff that I do, but also just as a photographer and someone else doing their stuff. And so the book was in process, but I hadn't had any thoughts about the cover. So this was not about trying to find a cover shoot. And the photo of the chairs, I didn't know anything about them until we actually more um, sent me some proofs for me to choose which ones I wanted. I mean, I'd taken a picture in them showing off my cool DMs, which I didn't bring to Indonesia. They would be too hot here. Yeah. And so, yes, I knew there would be a shot of me sat in those chairs, but I had no idea that this picture had been taken. And so when I was going through the proofs and stuff, um, I was picking all these different pictures that I liked of me, some in different outfits. And when I saw this picture, I just, it just resonated. And I immediately, messaged Maureen and said, I think this could be the book cover. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. one with me sat could be on the back. And that's basically what we did. Um, and so it was just, it, it kind of just felt like it was meant to be. Because as I said, we were not even intending to be taking a shot for a book cover. But this is how this beautiful, beautiful came about. And I've had a lot of people talk to me about how when they see the cover, it just immediately encapsulates this idea of being in conversation. Um, and Maureen, you showed it to someone at your workplace, didn't you, when, it, when you got the proof copy? Yeah, yeah. And the day that the proofs got delivered, Janice came and met me up in London um, so that I could get a copy. And I was just like pouring over it and just loving the tactile nature of it and stuff. And uh, I, we just finished a planning day at work. So I, I immediately ran in and sort of showed everybody. And without even knowing what the book was, um, you know, people just were really drawn to the cover. It was very evocative. And yeah, I think it's a really, a really nice piece that, that really does just, it just, it just, it tells a whole story in, in that one, in that one image, you know? So yeah, I was really pleased with it. And I, I was really pleased that Janice was really pleased with it as well. And, and I really uh, feel quite, um, quite privileged and quite grateful for her to actually, that she's actually used it. Um, for her first published work. So thank you, Janice. Appreciate you. Love you. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. And so guys, any of you that have the book book version, you literally have an original piece of art, photography, <laughs> art in your hands by Maureen Fisher. Make sure that you check her out on Instagram and her socials and stuff like that. Um, so you. Maureen, thank you. Um, you know, you can hear from Maureen later and if you want to follow her, we'll put her in information in the chat. Um, before we go on to the next segment of poetry, I forgot to say um, that I should say that any of you who actually have the book, book version, look at this, it says not for real sale, resale, you actually have something I don't have because the book only got published the Tuesday the 5th and I was on a plane on the Wednesday the 6th. Um, and then in Indonesia on the Thursday, the 7th. So I myself don't even have my own proper final copy. So you guys have something I don't have, but it's the proof copy still shows off the beauty of this. Right now, we're gonna go into our second section of um, poetry. And we're gonna start this off with a recording. Um, it's a poem called Run Out of Words. And I'm just gonna give you a little bit of background to it. And this is a piece that I wrote. It was the second of three pieces that I wrote in response to the killing of George Floyd in 2020. And the first piece I wrote was Humanity. And somebody um, made a comment on Facebook. And the first thing they said was that they have run out of words. And something about that just resonated in my spirit. And this is where this poem came from, run out of words. I've run out of words. Is it any wonder when new cycle after new cycle, I'm hearing on repeat of the passing of another loved one at the hands of the Almighty? Not the Almighty, 
but the almighty cocktail of two for ones, systemic and institutional, hatred and oppression, suppression and subjugation, discrimination and exclusion. That's just the way it is. I've run out of words to express my condolences, expel my frustration, explain my position. I've run out of words for my well-meaning friends to support their grief as they begin their awakening, to filter the facts into a drive through menu. Would you like fries and a drink with that? I've run out of words to encourage myself that a change is gonna come, much less encourage a brother or a sister to keep the faith, stay strong and hold on just a little while longer. I had hoped that the following words had run their course. You will have to work twice as hard as your white counterparts. You will have to be twice as good as they are. I had hoped those words had been archived in the annals of black history. Can you remember where you were when you first heard those words? They might not have been exactly those words, but if you're of a certain generation, you would have definitely heard a version of those words. I naively hoped my niece and nephew wouldn't need the talk. But as the times go by, all these perilous times, I am becoming resigned to the facts I must face that those words may never have a full stop. I've run out of words to finish this piece. I'm all out of words, so it's time you use yours. So I don't know about you, but I feel like 2020, was a year when I had a lot of times when I was lost for words, not just because of things like the killing of George Floyd, but there was a lot of loss and grief in different ways. And I think that would probably be the same for quite a few of us because not only the pandemic, and we don't know how people came into the pandemic, you may already have been grieving, you may have already been challenged by certain things. And yeah, so that really resonates, I think, with a few of the poems that are gonna come because the next poem that I'm gonna talk about is called the English is encased in a tear, but I'm actually going to share the Indonesian with you. And this is partly to show homage to this second homeland that was the place of my recreative birth, as it were. Um, and I'm going to read it for you. My friends, Indonesian friends, please be kind to me with my language, um, reading my poetry in Indonesian. So here we go. It's called Setetes Ayamata, which kind of means teardrop. Dalam setetes air mata, apa yang diceritakan? Tanpa bersuara, bercampur aduk, dan melebihi yang dapat diucapkan. Setetes demi setetes membawa ribuan rasa sakit, menjadi jalur berkisah yang diketahui oleh banyak orang, menawarkan sesaat suatu momen lega. Setetes air mata. And I don't know if some of you would recognize that a tear can be a whole language in itself. And it's really just talking about the fact that how tears can speak for us in a way that sometimes our own words cannot. The next piece is called Chorus. And I'm just gonna read straight on. I'm carrying loss in my bones. It is seeping out of every pore as if I've eaten too much of the king of fruits emitting a fragrance recognized by only the discerning. Some of it is generational, some from this present age. Others are so current I can feel them in the air. I'm carrying loss in my veins, pumping parallel to this life-giving blood circulating my being, siphoning my oxygen when I least expect it, leaving me breathless. If I were a tree cut down, my exposed inner rings would chronicle the losses. Even losses I've forgotten would still bear witness. Rooted deep in my subconscious, unearthed by remembrance, triggered by people, places and things, then the fresh sap of loss rises to the surface. I'm carrying loss in my bones. I want to put it down, but it would seem it's to be my forever friend. If only I could shake it off as easily as I once shook all 219 of the locks on my head. But as interlocked as the hairs on my head, so is the loss in my 206 bones. Soaked up like a sponge and stored in their warehouse, moving through my bloodstream to each moving part. 
maybe it will be that way until death do us part. Chorus. Now, although there can be great loss and it can be unspeakable loss, I choose to hope that hope can spring again. This is the next poem. And then after this, we're gonna be seeing a recording of a poem called Sitting with Amazing. But first, hope springs. Hope springs. Hope springs eternal, the poet hope set. But what about when it doesn't? When the third strand has been broken, now left empty handed, red raw marks, the only remnants of what you've clung desperately to hold on to. Streams in the wasteland yet to spring forth. Peace be still yet to be uttered. The darkest hour denying the dawn. What then? Do as the psalmist and let your lament be lifted aloud. Allow your soul to pour out its sorrow. Suppress not your confusion and disappointment. For there is a time to mourn and a time to rejoice. The pathway between them awash with tears, collected in a bottle, recorded in a book. Will they wash away the ashes to be exchanged for beauty? Become the still waters to which I am led? Will I find a place where my soul is restored? I hope so. For although one may not be able to say, hope springs eternal, I choose to believe hope can rise again, that the yet I, but still I, I will, can be the song in my heart and the declaration on my lips. For without hope, my journey cannot continue, a journey which in actuality may be the one towards hope. Hope springs. Thank you for continuing to listen and now, we're gonna go with Sitting with Amazing. And this is a poem that actually, yeah, I should say, Sitting with Amazing is what I said the morning I found out about the verdict in the Derek Chauvin trial for the killing of George Floyd. I actually didn't wanna hear about it the night before because I didn't have faith that justice would be done and I didn't want my evening to be ruined by bad news. And then in the morning I was speaking to my cousin Jacqueline who's helping me to co-host. And when she told me, I said, I am sitting with amazing. And this is where this poem came from, a poem which actually in 2021 became part of a winner's collection and is now on the Poetry Archive, which is just amazing in itself. So please enjoy sitting with amazing. Thank you. My name is Janice Wine. You're about to hear Sitting with Amazing, which was recorded April 23rd, 2021. Today, I'm sitting with amazing. Even though there are still so many things that are an onslaught against my mind and senses, I'm sitting with amazing. Because I need joy, because I need peace, because I need to be able to inhale and exhale something other than trauma, I'm sitting with amazing. I'm reclining in the sun streaming through my window. I'm remembering yesterday's sky and taking in the sunset. I'm sitting with amazing. I'm hearing about how balsamic vinegar plus some heat can elevate tomatoes. Visualizing how a plant in stew is going to feed my soul. I'm sitting with amazing. I'm belly laughing with a cousin about my failed attempt at Sahur. My tray was laden with goodness. My timing was off. I'm sitting with amazing. I'm smiling at the power of a bowl of soup and sourdough bread. Simple things saturated with love, totally unplanned, completely intentional. I'm sitting with amazing. I'm leaning into wonder, open to awe, maintaining my joy. I'm sitting with amazing. I'm here writing instead of sleeping, 60 minutes and counting, 306 words, 1,748 characters and stopping, 
behind every thought a bigger story. Today, I'm sitting with amazing. Sitting with amazing. And I'm actually sitting with amazing having all of you guys here with me today. And I really do appreciate it. And so now it's time to be in a short conversation with another one of my creative cousins. Um, anyone who has maybe come to one of our workshops or just seen us online will know how we collab with one another. So her name is Rhoda Fisher. She goes by Wish Art Works um, in her socials and for her artwork. And um, we're just gonna share a little bit about how we get what we do and do what we do together, even though sometimes, um, where are you Rhoda? Um, I'm like, stop forcing me to do <laughs> poems and stuff like that. Um, but can I introduce you to my dear, dear cousin sister, Rhoda Fisher, AKA Wish Art Works. Hi everyone. And thank you so much for having me. Congratulations to you, Jan, on, you, uh, on celebrating uh, your book launch. And yeah. Um, sorry, 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 sorry. Can, can I just say, can I just say? Technically, because the book's out there, it's not allowed to be called a book launch, but of course we can be flexible, you know, creative life. We were celebrating your book it's launch. Like celebrating, and yesterday was exactly one month to the day that it came out in the UK. Okay, so go ahead, Rhoda, Prime. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so this is what, <laughs> this is our relationship. Um, yeah. <laughs> so more, um, Janice wanted uh, a, just a quick discussion. And with Janice and myself, we, we normally have a, um, dialogue about our artwork rather than just having a, a monologue about the artwork and the artwork that uh, Janice wanted me to discuss with uh, the group was um, the piece called Unity and Janice has it in her her book. Uh, Unity came out of the celebration about two years ago during a fist in celebrating uh, celebration of uh, emancipation um, uh, for the US and for the men for the Caribbean, it is on the 1st of um, August. And I related it to a piece that um, Marcus Garvey had spoke about um, when he had talked about one aim, one God, one destiny, and that piece of work. And that kind of quite resonated with me as we celebrate emancipation. And so I created that piece of work and then uh, okay. Janice started well, to no. steal it. Oh, sorry. And sorry, darling. Do we actually have the, the picture so that people can see the artwork? Is that possible? So it should be, it could be pinned. Okay. But if, you put, if you put it on the, if you put it on video, Emery, then maybe I can spotlight it. I think I, what I'll do is I'll put it, I'll put it in, um, in a bit. I can't do it no problem. Um, at the moment. Thank All right. Know. If I, if I do that, oh. you can see. Yes. That's there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So that was that was in relation to um, that piece of work, and then Janice wrote in response to it. And something that I that we normally discuss and we talk about is the collaboration between ourselves, um, because I've I was able to work with Janice throughout my last set of studies. Um, and collaborating with drawing <laughs> not only pictures of Janice, but pictures of um, women that relate to um, historical figures um, in and around the world mm -hmm. and how it relates to us now. And what we've decided or we noticed that we were doing is either I would draw a picture and then I would ask Janice to respond to it or Janice will create a piece of work, a piece of writing, and then I would respond to it visually. So that's kind of how we, we've been working um, for the last, I think maybe four, four or five years. Yeah, about four um, or five years. I, yeah. She bullies me, yeah. she says, Janice, write me a poem now. And, um, and then I get on with it and do it. Um, and um, one of those poems that um, is called I Am, I'm gonna share it at the end. And Rhoda literally gave me one sentence. Um, she was like, Jan, I'm working on this project that if I remember right, it was around margins and marginalizations um, mm -hmm. and stuff. And you said, I've just got this sentence. I am all the identity you need. 
And I, I kind of sat with that, you know, I asked her a little bit about what's the project about and she gave me a bit of context and kind of sat with that and then that poem came out. So that's the poem that's gonna wrap up um, our time. Um, Rhoda, anything else you wanna add or share before um, I actually share the piece, Emancipation? Well, well, just thinking about um, how unity links with us as um, the human race mm -hmm. and how it does say, you know, that piece of work, it's, it's called unity and the saying is one God, one destiny, one aim. And that's what I believe that we should have. It's one aim that, you know, we all should be free. We all should be equal and have a positive uh, life. My link is in the um, chat soon. So you can follow and see some of the work that both myself and Janice have. Also, if you want to, please follow us on Creative Cousins because Janice yeah. and myself collaborate quite a lot. New on work that. coming soon. Yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jan. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Rhoda. Thank you. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. Marcus Garvey's instructions regarding mind control. Allowing others to rule the mind means body and soul will follow. No shackles may adorn our person, but enslavement will be our living shroud. Control of the mind is a precious commodity, not to be traded on the open market. Investing in ourselves requires knowing our worth, perceiving our greatness, cherishing our pearls, or those who applaud you may not truly appreciate you. Take note of who you allow into your circumference, not any and anybody should speak into your life. In peacetime and war, the mind is a battlefield, defending itself from cradle to the grave. Once we cry freedom, the lines have been drawn. None but ourselves can free our minds. Emancipation, thank you. Ah, and actually very fitting because today is Jamaica Independence Day. You can see I've got my teacher on, you know, flying the colors for Jamaica, the land from which I hail. My parents are born there. My heritage is Jamaican. And, um, you know, in the book, there are a couple of poems at the end and I see them as a nod to my roots because although I was born in the UK, my roots and in my soul and in my DNA is that land called Jamaica. And so I wrote a couple of poems and I want to share another one with you called Sakde Soup. Now there was, there's a tradition in a lot of West Indian or Caribbean homes to have soup on a Saturday. And I have to tell you, when I was a child, I did not like soup at all, or porridge or any of other things. But anyway, that's another topic. Um, but I really do appreciate the Saturday soup now. Um, and um, yeah, I was asking my uncle, I was asking my uncles and aunties, so what is the tradition? Where did it come from? And you will be interested to know that quite a few of them were like, you know what, I don't know, you know. I just know that's what we used to do. Um, one of my uncles though, my uncle Tex gave me a bit more of context and maybe later on in the question time, I can tell you about it, but it was kind of all around rooted in the fact that on a Friday, that's when the butchers used to cut the meat back in Jamaica. And so people knew they could go and get their meat. And also people had been working hard in the fields, expending all their energy, get a good pot of, pot of soup to put back the energy in them. And, and there's more, it's deeper than that, but that's kind of just a little taste. And now I'm going to read the poem Saturday soup, which actually came out of a bowl of soup. I think it was cousin Jacqueline had cooked and I went round and I had some, and this is where it came from. Saturday soup. Saturday, in case anyone missed that. <laughs> Do you see what I see? Seasoned with stories passed down from generation to generation, spiced with traditions and a sense of identity, soaked with culture and familial connectivity, infused with aromas that remind us of home, cooked down with life lessons simmering slowly, the addition of time and essential ingredient, peppered with pride for the hands that provide, with little or much the table was laid. This is more than a bowl of soup. That they seek everyone. I kind of wish I could have some now, man. Wow, that would be good. But I did have my fried dumpling and fish and planting this morning in honor of Independence Day. So, guys, 
that is like the first set of three poems. It's making you hungry, Marsha. I tell you, girl, it's making me hungry now because I ain't had dinner yet. I was so, you know, I, can't, I don't eat before stuff like this. You know, I, I, I drink my water, but I don't eat before stuff like this. So I'm hoping later on, but it won't be sat this week. Uh, it takes time to cook that down. Um, and I'll let you know a little secret where I said, um, where time is an essential ingredient, if you read it, it's actually the herb time, which is a big part of Jamaican cooking. You have to have your time, man. You have to have your time. Okay, so now we're going to have a bit of a question and answer or response kind of thing, because I know you guys have mostly just been listening, but I love that there were emojis and stuff and clicks, and I thank you. So I'm going to make myself vulnerable and open. I can't promise to be able to answer everything, but I will do my best. And Jacqueline is going to help facilitate this time for us. Hi, so I hope you've all got your questions ready, but just to give you a few more minutes to think about it, I've got a question for Janice myself. So today, tonight, you were in conversation with Rhoda and Maureen Fisher. Um, both of them, as you said, are creatives. Maureen being published, her photos have been published, and um, Rhoda being in galleries. How important to you as a creative is it to, do you get inspiration? How important is it for you to have people like them around you? I think that the importance of that is that we, Okay, so there's a, there's, a, there's a biblical verse that talks about how iron sharpens iron, yeah? And so I think that, you know, even if you're not looking at a faith perspective, that principle, I think that you can get hold of that principle that, you know, when you're around people who are creative, when you're around people who are inspiring, when you are people that make you laugh, you know, you can be in a place where you're not feeling to laugh, but you're around people who have such a joy that actually it just kind of comes and, and allows you to have an opportunity to laugh as well. So I think that, you know, we feed off one another. And as Rhoda said, you know, one of the things that we do sometimes, it's not even, we haven't even planned collaboration sometimes. Sometimes we're just chatting as cousins and catching up with one another. And then an idea sparks off and I tease Rhoda. I'm like, I can see you. You've got your notebook, haven't you? You're going like this, you know, like I tease her. You know, ideas are just kind of flying off. So I think being around like-minded people, whether you're a creative or not, but people who, both challenge you, encourage you, inspire you. And yeah, I, I feed off that. And I mean, you know, the book is called In Conversation. Literally all the poems in here are because a line, either from something that someone said to me or that I heard or read, just something sparked and it wouldn't leave me alone until I tried to do something about it. You know, some of these things are actually written about people's personal stories that they shared with me in the sense that it's speaking to or responding to that story. You know, it's not necessarily telling the story that that's comedy, but it's responding to something that they said to me. So, you know, that's this is a prime example of of how creativity works in that kind of kind of way. OK, thank you very much for that. Iron sharpens iron is the scripture that you used. Is there anybody else who would have, has any more questions? Because I could talk to Janice all day but I'd like to give anybody else an opportunity to ask about anything that's in the book or the run-up to the book or anything regarding her writing. I'd just like to ask a question. Um, congratulations Janice, I think it was a um, very informative um, conversation about your book. Thank you so much. Is that can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. Sorry, that, that <laughs> I, was Sharon. I think it's Sharon, Sharon yeah, that I'm recognising your voice. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm going, I'm getting ready to go out, but um, yeah, um, one of the things i like to ask is about the, the title of your, your book, In Conversation. Is it in conversation in terms of people's own interpretation or there's some philosophy behind the term in conversation? Because you could have lots of variation mm -hmm. in terms of interpretation. Yeah. What was your main aim? So kind of it, it's almost literal because as I was sharing about how um, most of these poems came out of me being in conversation either with people or in conversation as it were with a line or a phrase that I heard and I couldn't get rid of it so I had to in a sense dialogue with it creatively in order to actually see what would come out of it. So that's why the book is called In Conversation but you know you talked about is it open to interpretation I do think it is because even the cover, I was very clear about the cover when I saw it, because what I like, and I didn't want me on the cover, because I didn't want it to be that you have to think that you're in conversation with me. But I feel that there's an invitation for people to be in conversation with the poems in this book, 
You know, you can approach the poems in this book and, and you can feel free to just read them as light entertainment. Or you can think, let me, let me see what maybe these poems are saying. You know, there could be more to some of these lines. Like, because for example, my friend Chelsea was sharing with me just yesterday morning that when she read Oh Crumbs, that she talked about how sometimes we want to pressure people to have to be a certain way, to have to do things. And actually that made her really challenged about how does she sometimes look at what people are doing or how they're doing, or even how does she allow people to pressure her to maybe do things. And that was a poem that came out of me seeing croissants, flakes on my chest. I mean, I was pushing towards that fact, especially where I said, you know what, people might think I'm a disgrace in this moment because of the flaky croissants on my chest but I don't care. So I was touching on the idea of, because the last line says there must surely be a time and place where we can let the crumbs fall. We don't have to be so bothered about the fact. So it was also just allowing people to see, do you want to be in conversation with these poems or to interpret in whatever way you want to, especially because that image is open. You can come and take a seat and maybe you'll be in conversation with someone else. You know, there are poems about faith and other stuff in here. They may resonate in a way that even I, didn't expect because I've heard some people's responses and I've been like wow I, I'm surprised that that's where it came and humbled that that's how it touched me. Uh, thank you very much Janice I uh, will keep in touch. Thank you. Definitely yes um, as I said I mean one of my ministry my church ministry is um, to empower ladies and young ladies as well and our theme for this um, year is women in action and um, you know we've been um, looking at black women in, in, in authors. So, yeah, so watch this space, Janice. I will watch this space. Thank you so much for joining, <laughs> and you know where to find me. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I'm not, I haven't got your, um, your what's it called again, your telephone number. Um, um, we can chat about that kind of stuff offline, and that, yes. um, you've got my social yes. media, and we can pick that up, yeah? I could do it there. Thank you very much, sis. Thank you so much, Bye. Sis. Bye. Thank you very much, Sharon. Um, we're going to move on to Lorraine, but just before you move on, um, I think perceptions and um, Hello. expectations Hi. came Lorraine, from please. that conversation. But Lorraine, go ahead. Hello. Lorraine? Hello? Hi, you're, you're Hi, on. Lorraine? Lorraine? Has your connection gone? Hi, Lorraine, have we got you? Have you unmuted yourself? Have yeah, we lost you? I was just waiting until it was the right time. <laughs> oh, it's your turn now. <laughs> right, okay, okay. So hi everyone, hi Janice. It's, hi um, Lorraine. It's really great to be. Uh, yeah, it's really great to be on this today with you. Um, I think I've got just a couple of questions for you and they're kind of probably more generic, but just wanted with you having now your own published copy of your poetry book, um, what you're hoping for next um, as a follow on from this. I know you're still like really putting it out there, which I think is great. Just wondered. Okay, so yeah, thank you for that question. So to be honest, I actually have like, two other books in mind. Um, it's really interesting kind of linking to part of Jacqueline's question about kind of being around creative people. I think also just doing creative things, like while doing this book and just seeing the process and stuff, I'm not saying it was an easy process, but I immediately thought, oh, book number two, some of you, if you follow me on socials will know that I often do Thursday thoughts. Um, and I was like, I could put Thursday thoughts into a book. It's almost ready made. I'd need to kind of look at it and shape it because okay. a lot of people respond yeah. to that. So I'm like, oh, I could do Thursday thoughts. And when I turned 46 a couple of years ago, I kind of did a post of 46 things I've learned. And I went, oh, that could maybe like be a book because I kind of did learning and, and kind of principles I'd learned. And one of them was actually as simple, but very important as what my mom used to say to me when I was a child, pack your things from the night before. You know, when you think you're grown and you maybe don't need to do that no more. And then when you're running around in the morning, you realize you should have packed your things the night before, right? Um, so, you know, I was like, that could go into a bit because people seem to really gravitate to those kind of things that are helping to encourage them slash challenge them or bring them inspiration and stuff. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's, that's kind of there. And I also would kind of really like to do an audible 
an audio version of this book. People have asked me about it. Yeah, I, mean, I had no time to do that before I jumped on a plane, but it's, it's in the back of my mind. When I kind of get a little bit more settled here, I'm kind of holding a number of plates at the same time um, to do an oh. audible version of this book, possibly. So yeah, can yeah. I just say like, Lorraine is an excellent singer and I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a heads up we potentially might be doing a collaboration next year. So watch this space. Ooh, yep. <laughs> Did you have another Today. question, Wayne? You said, so, sorry, Jacqueline, go ahead. You obviously say in this. No, go ahead, Janice, go ahead. Yeah, um, those three ideas sound really great. Um, I think in what you said, it's, it's answered what may be my next, what was going to be my okay. next question. Cool. in terms of where you want to go next but I just think it's really brilliant and I salute you for Thank stepping you. out and doing this I think it's great yeah that you've acted on it and it's it's that even better that you you you're surrounded by people your cousins and other people you know that you feel inspired by motivated by I think it, it is great to be around like-minded people and I salute you and really con great con huge congratulations on this thank you thank you so thank much you. really appreciate that thank okay. you all right. Thank you. Um, um, unfortunately, iPhone, you're going to be the next. I'm sorry to call you iPhone. It's just that that's how you're you're identified. Um, so go ahead, ask um, Janice your question. Um, it's like. Jack Hilton. I don't know why it came up iPhone. Hey, cousin. Um, but yes, it's Theo here. Hey. Um, Lorraine actually asked my question, so. <laughs> Um, it is maybe, here. maybe she's got EAP as well, I don't know. But, maybe. So I'm just going <laughs> to take this opportunity to say congratulations. Well done, cousin Janet. Thank you. You already know what I think of you and how proud I am of you. Like and um, keep doing what you're doing. Jeffrey, stop messaging me. I know I'm iPhone. I'm going to change it to my name. <laughs> but yeah, all the best. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, you know I love you like cooked food, or in this instance, Saturday soup. Saturday soup, man. Take care, <laughs> and I love you loads. Love you loads. Thank you. Appreciate you, darling. Oh, thank you for that. That particular Saturday soup had the best pumpkin in it that I've ever had. It was lovely. <laughs> Janice, you said in your um, emancipation, I, I think there's a line that says, not everyone should speak into your life. Mm -hmm. Would you like to elaborate on that? Okay, so... Uh, for me, I mean, that, that kind of is a bit of a Jamaican saying. Uh, I mean, I don't know if we can say that we coined the phrase. Maybe we did. Like, I don't know. But like, you know, it's like, I do feel, because the fact is, in the same way that iron sharpens iron, I mentioned earlier on, I do feel that we need to be open to what people say and how they are. Because I think that we, we learn from one another. We learn by being in community. We learn by being in conversation in one way or another with people around us, right? Um, but the fact is that we are human people with our flaws, et cetera. And so not everyone is necessarily the best person to speak into your life, to actually give you advice or that kind of thing. And I think that we each know maybe people like that and that's no judgment necessarily on them, but it's just clear now, it might be that we're at different stages in life. It might be that actually, you know, they don't understand where you're coming from and that could be because of a different background or culture and so they just really can't get some of the nuances of where you're at but also sometimes to also use a phrase they're sometimes they're just bad mind people you know what i mean they're just people that just they 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 don't want the best for you you know um and you know those are not people <laughs> that you want to be speaking into your life and i'm not saying that you must just cut off people like that like that like that but i think that um I, I don't know, I can't remember where the saying comes from, but I, I want to say it might be a Maya Angelou, but I don't know. But, you know, there's a saying that people say that, you know, when people show you who they are, believe them. And I think that yeah. there are also sometimes people who they've shown you who they are and they are not for you um, for whatever mm -hmm. reason. And I think that so therefore not any and anybody should speak into your life. Thank you. A, a very wise words. <laughs> um, a note Absolutely. that came up from Olivia, I, I believe, whilst you were um, reading Sitting with Amazing was simply beautiful. And I think that that um, coins your lyrics, your cadence, the way that you not just 
the lyrics, but when we hear it, I think it's quite powerful when we see you perform live. And I've been in a room with you and I have felt the atmosphere in a room change when you've started to speak. When you're delivering your poetry, um, do you ever feel that? Do you ever feel the room changing and the, the atmosphere changing when you're speaking? And if you do, how does that make you feel? Well, thank you. Thank you um, um, for sh sharing that and saying that. And um, I don't know if I necessarily can say that I feel the room shift. I think I definitely feel me shift. So in the sense that um, as long as I've been doing things up front, so, you know, I, I'm a church baby, right? I'm a pastor's kids and I, I, I'm a church baby. My dad's a pastor, so I'm a PK. And I mean, my dad's held every kind of post. So I was doing things in front of big crowds from when I was like five. You know, the church is good training for public speaking, I'm telling you, right? Um, but as much as I've had that, I still get that <laughs> heart beating thing. Like say if I'm at an open mic and I know my name's coming or if I'm supposed to be the main speaker and I know my name's coming, sometimes I can't focus on anything else because I'm waiting to hear my name. And as I hear my name, my heart starts beating really fast. And I'm like, <gasps> but as soon as I get up and open my mouth, almost instantaneously, just a calm comes upon me and I just come into my own. And, and so I feel that shift of actually from potentially that person who was like, <gasps> sort of like, you know, and I mean, it's, it's got better because I, I now want to be able to focus on what other people are saying, you know, as I've got older, it's got better, but. So I definitely sense a shift in me and, and I've heard what people have said afterwards, which has really humbled me to hear where things have touched them. So yeah, so I can't definitely say I felt a shift in the room, but it's interesting because like one of the best things that poets like is that kind of low resonating, mm, you know, sort of thing, right? And so I do, I do notice when, when something's hit some people, but it's also interesting because sometimes I've been sharing a piece and actually the room seems kind of quiet to me. And mm. a past Janice who, you know, would be have more of her need of validation issues, you know, they still try to come up every now and then, would be there thinking, uh oh, is this like not hitting home? I, I don't have so much of those thoughts anymore. But then sometimes when people come to me and they say what they're hearing and what they were listening and what hit them, I realize that maybe they were just taking it in. And that's why actually it wasn't like all the finger snaps and the mmm and, mm, and all that mm, kind of that's stuff. That's right, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's, yeah. That's, that's the best answer I have. <laughs> no, it's that living in the moment that they can only absorb it. And because your words are very powerful, and very strong, and sometimes it takes that, that moment. But uh, enough of me. Um, I think I'm, it's going to be Kevin of Live Life Like Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> to speak next. Kevin, would you like to ask your question? And then it will be Trevor Wine and then Maureen. Kevin, are you there? Yes. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, we can. Yeah, okay. I, <laughs> um, I was just, yeah, I'm very touched by all the poems that uh, Genesis created. And uh, I'm also inspired by, you know, how you are planning forward. Uh, the dreams that you have. I'm just wondering, as you look back at what you have done, when were the times that gave you the most inspiring moments that made you most creative, that caused you to be in your most, you know, creative self? Mm. What were those things that helped you? Okay, thank you, Kevin. And I'll say, Kevin and I used to work together in Indonesia, man. And it's like, I miss Kevin. We're hoping that we can get to see each other in September, hopefully, God willing. Um, so my most creative. So, okay, I can tell some of the places where I feel most creative. And some of that is actually just hanging out in coffee shops and stuff like that. Just being in a quiet space where I can have like a whole day to myself, maybe enjoying some coffee, enjoying some atmosphere and stuff like that. And, and that often tends to be a place where I can just write or just think, because I think sometimes my most creative moments are when I've had time to have some headspace. So when actually I can be somewhere where no demands on me for at least a little moment and I can just kind of just be literally, like I can just be in my, in my own space. Um, 
So I think that that is, that is something that's important to me, place, literally being in a place where I actually can just breathe and exhale. So whether it is having coffee, whether it is just chilling at home or being at the South Bank, one of my favorite places, just with the view of watching the world go by. And I try to always walk with some kind of a notepad in order to do that. But I think I also want to say to your question, and I want to tie this to Indonesia, a place which you both have in common. So for those that don't know, I came out to Indonesia in 2010, um, doing community development work with a beautiful, beautiful bunch of people, some of whom are online now. Guys, I love you. You are the highlight of my time in Indonesia. Um, so for after, gosh, I think it was in something like 2015, 2016, you know, some of the work that we do here, we work with urban poor and that can sometimes be challenging and stuff. And I think I was just feeling very tired. I think I'd lost part of my creativity or my creative boss, not in my work, it was happening in my work, but just feeding my own creative soul. And I remember I was in Singapore on my way back and I literally sat in this YMCA room and I said, God, there has got to be a poetry community somewhere in Indonesia. Cause I was just feeling an ache for something creative. I didn't even kind of know where it came from but I just knew I was feeling for it. And I literally went online. I was like, poetry communities, Jakarta. And up came Unveiled Poetry who I ended up then being able to collaborate with, um, Unspoken, Unmasked and, and that just being with those people and just actually starting to blog again to literally actually just try and be creative. That opened me up. And it fed me in a way that I realized I hadn't been fed in a long time. So just allowing myself permission to get creative again and just going with it and putting myself out there, that definitely. So being in Indonesia at that time and finding those communities and just going with it, that has been very significant in, in me being able to be creative again. Yeah, I can, I can see it's really like being you being able to connect and having a community around that inspires you, 100%. that really helps. 100%. Of which you have been a part, my Kevin. I'm looking forward to a rooftop soon. Yeah, <laughs> and the wonderful jokes that we can have. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kevin. Um, we're winding down now, so it's going to be Trevor and then Maureen will be the final um, question, unless somebody has a burning question that hasn't been asked. Over to you, Trevor Wine. Okay, hi everyone. My daddy and guest, people. Guest of honor. Dad, you're gonna put your camera yeah. on and let people see where I get part of my looks from? It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not going off. Oh. It's okay. not, it's for someone, it's, it's just seemed to have stuck, it won't come off. Okay, never mind. I tried, but unable to start video. If you get the yes. book, there's a picture of my mom and dad in the book, plug, plug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to speak it off the video, but girl, yes, I'm so proud of you. And we are we are very proud of you. And I was just listening to all of your presentation. Just saying to me, I'm a daughter that. That's all right. <laughs> I that man. I pick me that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man, we are so proud of you. I said I've read quite a few of them and um, they're really, really 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 touched me you know and um i made an i made a note of quite a few of them uh that that really touched me and just 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 be permission granted and you recite a few quite a few of them self-medicating the set me free broken symposium yeah and um one of the questions i want to you ask, really did read them and teach what did <laughs> well, i thought i thought it coming on you see <laughs> and i thought i better <laughs> i better sort of you know well, sort of uh, you know, verse myself, you know, <laughs> with some of them. Yeah, and um, the jelly coconut one as well. It's, it's, it's such a laugh. <laughs> yeah, and uh, one of the questions I, I was asked ask a question on the one uh, that set me free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, looking at it, can we truly, can we truly be set free? <laughs> well, you know, my, dad, my dad's a bishop, guys, yeah, so you can get some big, good, you know, theological discussions with him. You can chat with him afterwards, maybe. I think, can we truly be set free? So I think, gosh, so I'm a, I'm a woman of faith. I believe in God. I believe that um, through the gift that he has given in allowing us to be in relationship with him, 
which comes through Isa al Masi. I think that there is a freedom that is on offer to us through that and through faith. But not everybody um, would claim a faith in that same way. I think that there is a sense of freedom. I mean, I talked about emancipation and Marcus Garvey from Jamaica who talked about the, the freedom of our minds, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. You know, so the fact is that you, you know, people can set you free. So even if you think about the subject of slavery, people can technically say slavery is over, but if in your own mindset, you still see yourself as enslaved, or if in your own mindset, because people have told you from a child that you're no good, and those things can be very powerful and very damaging. So I'm not saying that it's easy, but that if in your own mind, that is still holding you, even when your life has changed. You know, there are some of us who we get to an older age and we are achieving lots of things and people would think that we are so confident, this and other, but in our own minds, you know, some people talk about things like imposter syndrome and stuff. We are still feeling like we are that little child that was told that you're no good or what have you. And I think there is a freedom that can come when we free our minds from some of those negative thoughts and negative feelings where we almost a bit like in O Crumbs of Home, we say, I don't care. If that's what people think I'm a disgrace, I don't care. You know, I believe in who I am. I believe in the potential that I have. And, and I think each person will know here that I'm not talking about just kind of being egotistical or anything like that, but actually just, you know, like I said, the emancipation, you know, invest in yourself and, and perceive your own greatness. Cherish what you have. Cherish your pearls is actually a, a, is a bit of a, a scriptural reference, you know, cherish what you have. and 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 yeah, acknowledge who you are and, and enjoy and embrace who you are. And, and I think that those are things that can help us to be, to be set free. What truly set free is, I think that might be subjective for all of us. We're all gonna have a different interpretation of that. But I definitely think that some of those things about cherishing ourselves, releasing ourselves as much as possible from some of the negative expectations or thoughts or, of others and even of ourselves, definitely can at least get us along the journey to, to being set free. That, and that's that's my thoughts those are my few words in jesus name. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. thank you good answer thank you <laughs> thank you very much um trevor for that um it's wonderful to hear that from our fathers even though you've just said that you know we need to free ourselves words of our fathers are very very important and they stay with us so thank you very much and I'm, I'm seeing that um Maureen has said nice pop pops and we, when you were giving your response Janice we've seen word and a few um claps and yes very true so just to encourage you that you know you're speaking to your audience that we're yeah. hearing you and we're receiving very much so, very much so. so um Maureen would you I, like I, to so I've got a, a, a question just on, on, I guess it's on your creative process in that, Janice. And, and for, for everybody that's an aspiring writer or, or poet, when do you, when do you, um, when do you know that a, poet is, a poem is done? Um, when do you stop editing? Because I think about things like, you know, um, words like I'm carrying loss in my bones is mm. like one of those that you're just like, wow, you know, and, you know, when you talk about, you know, behind every thought is a bigger story. Are those like, do, when, you're, when you're writing, are those words there or are they coming in edits or, you know, what, what, tell us a bit about how you, how you know when something has reached the point where like, yeah, that's, that's the one for that. Yeah, thanks, Maureen. So, uh, uh, and I know you're not asking for a formula. So when I say this, I know that's not what you're asking for. I'm not sure if I completely know a formula, so I can only share kind of, and that's what you asked me to share my process. So, so if we stick with you know, these poems, a lot of which have come out in conversation. So I, I often have a notebook. I have loads of notes in my phone. Sometimes they're just sporadic sentences um, and stuff that I never come back to or that I find accidentally <laughs> later on. Sometimes I immediately get a, like a barrage of thoughts that come and I will just write them down in whatever way they're coming. Like I've been on a few writing workshops and they talk about just write um, and they do different things like a free write. So they often tell you that as a person who wants to write, it's a good discipline to just do free writes that can be for three, five minutes or 10 minutes. And one of the key things is 
you just write. You do not try to edit yourself. You know, you can use a word prompt <clears throat> and stuff and you don't try to edit, you just write. So in a sense, you're just allowing your mind, your, your spirit, your soul, as it's responding to that word prompt or that line to just see what comes out, you know? Um, and then afterwards, you can either just leave it and let it go. Or when you go back, then you start to think, oh, do I wanna, do I wanna grow this? Is this something there? Was I just clearing my brain a bit, clearing my brain space? Or actually, is this something that I want to build on and kind of go back to it? Mm -hmm. So I feel in a way that a lot of my creative process, particularly with things like this in conversation, where it was a line of something or something, you know, partying with someone at the station and they asked a question and then I've gone away and like, it's just ringing in my head and I've literally had to let go down. And like, I like, I prefer to write on paper um, first and stuff. And, and, and I've done that. And then I've, I feel like sometimes it literally is, it's almost like I feel it in my soul. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is done now. Yeah. It, you know, so I think there is some there is some strategy to saying like you need to leave this alone now because sometimes you can start editing and like I'm telling you, man, like with with even with this, you know, even when like um, the, the the manuscripts have been uploaded, but we were still tweaking on the cover, and I'd got the proof copy, and I'd realized little things that oh I'd missed a comma or whatever because your eyes can start to glaze over at one point, right? And then mm. I was like, wait, hold on, let wait, wait, actually, does that line work? Wait, does that flow in the way that I wanted it to flow? And I feel that some of those tweaks were good tweaks, you know, because as you're reading it over and really taking it in, I think that's also a good thing to do as well, to read the things over and over. So they really resonate with you a bit, you know, where are they connecting? Where is it hitting you um, and that? And I started to tweet some stuff and I got to a point when I went, Jamie, step away, step, step, step right. away. Because right. you're getting to a point now where actually you may completely undo this thing because you're mm. trying to like tweak it too much. So right. I think, yeah like I, I can only kind of share that that's kind of what it is for me but I do think it's part of a combination of um yeah feeling it in your spirit that that first initial prompting and just allowing your mind just to drop on a page or drop in your phone or whatever it is whatever is coming to you don't try to edit it just let it all flow a stream of consciousness you know you and I often have those kind of voice note or other dialogues just let it all drop out you know what I mean yeah. because I think sometimes when you're trying to edit in that initial stage you might miss completely because sometimes you don't know where you're going. You just know that this line is ringing and won't let you go. Do you know what I mean? You have no idea what it's supposed to go to. It's like, I'm trying to remember. There was a piece I wrote recently and I can't remember it. I, the line was in my head. I had this whole idea of where it was going to go. It went in a completely different direction, but I think it was the right direction to go in. And I just kind of allowed the words. I was actually fighting it. I was literally trying to force this thing, force the words that were coming to me into more of the shape. And I said, Jenna, stop it. Just let it be what it wants to be. And so in the end, I just let it, just go with it, you know? Um, so I think initially just drop it on the page. I don't know if artists who do painting might think the same thing, I don't know, but that initial thing, just to let it be. I guess it's a bit like, oh, you know, they talk about the funnel. I don't know if they still use that kind of um, analogy or whatever now, you know, when you've got lots of ideas, start with the funnel, you know, let it all just drop in there. And then the funnel gets narrower, doesn't it? And then you start to refine it and you can have your different ways of, of doing that. Hope that kind of answers enough ish your question absolutely absolutely thank you thank you thank you very much well oh we're moving towards the back end and the closing of the book but it's great that it's a book and we can reopen it and we can thumb it many times over but before I go Kai had said um she wanted to offer you big congratulations and she really loves what you said about packing your bags the night before so Carmen Wine we're grateful for that advice. Thank you. Janice. Thank you, Cousin Kai. And I have to do a shout out to Cousin Kai because she's somebody, she's also an author in her own right. And Cousin Kai was somebody I called on when I wanted to embark on this and said, Kai, can we have a Zoom chat, man? Tell me, how does this work? What did you do? How did you make it happen? And trust me, like this, you know, just knowing how to approach some of this, Kai was so helpful in that. Go check her out. Go check out what she's doing. Um, you won't regret it. You won't regret it. You there, Kai? Just to say hi, Kai? You there? I think You're she had there. an event today, so she might literally oh. kind of pop top. Okay, no, that's, that's, that's fine. fine. Okay, well, Janice, I'm sure for those who have the book, that they are very grateful, but I know something very exciting about the book happened in Indonesia. Yes, thank Just, you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> 
So just because of the fact that I published with Amazon, very grateful because how cool to have your work on like Amazon and stuff like that. Um, but in Indonesia, they don't have so much access to Amazon. So even though it could be delivered here, it's very expensive and stuff. And um, the night that I flew in on the 7th, like I got to my home like after midnight and one of my lovely team members become little sister. We have like, we say Kaka is older sister, Adi is younger sister and it's a, it's a great relationship. She'd come to meet me at the airport and we were talking about the, the pro book and I was saying, because we were trying to get her onto Amazon to see if she could get the Kindle and she couldn't get it because no Amazon here. And, and she was like, Ka, I think that there's a publishing company here that you could actually get your Indonesian, get the book published through. And I was like, really? So no, I've only been here for a week. But she gave me the details. I got in com um, conversation with them. And would you believe that today, my certificate of publication for the Indonesian publication of In Conversation was WhatsApp to me literally about an hour before coming online. So my Indonesian family, a book book version. I signed up on the edits on Thursday. I have my certificate of publication came through today. So I'm hoping that I can get you an actual book version of this very soon they should be printing it um, and stuff and sending me some copies and then I will figure out how to get this to you so very very exciting to have that happen in my second heartland and the place where a lot of this began to grow again so yeah thank you Sounds for excellent Fantastic. some excellence coming on in response to that and um, I'll fly into Indonesia to get it that has got to be live life like him <laughs> Um, yours will be waiting Janice, for you <laughs> <laughs> well I, I was actually thinking do you mean they'll get signed copies before we do over here but never mind Sorry. grateful <laughs> for that <laughs> grateful well remember guys hello this actually means that me the person who wrote it will actually have a finalized copy finally of my book so i'm right. excited about that <laughs> That's right. So you've got um, from Sonia Grant. Um, well done, Janice. Awesome. Looking forward to your next in conversation and books to come. Sabrina, well done, cuz. So proud of you. And I know that, um, as you said, you were talking about free rights before. And I know that you've done sessions in collaboration of creative cousins of doing that. And I'm looking forward to more of those. Um, but Janice, I'm going to hand over to you to take us out. Thank you. So I promise you guys, I didn't want to keep you later than nine o'clock. And so I'm gonna um, share this last poem with you, I am. I am gonna stick around for a little bit, you know, we'll stop the recording and stuff. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll stick around for a little bit um, and that afterwards, but I wanna share this last poem with you, I am. I, it first got performed here in Indonesia. This is the poem where I said that Rhoda had given me the line, I am all the identity you need in conjunction with the project she was doing. It became a poem, we, we collaborated on it in 2019. I performed it for the first ever time at the Ubud Writers Readers Festival that year as the Women's Poetry Slam. You know, it got some good responses and has grown from then. I should just say, permission granted, got me first runner up. Woo -woo! So anyway, just saying that. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna share, I am, and then we are gonna like just officially close. And I just wanna thank you again personally for joining me in conversation. I appreciate every single one of you that has come on, thank you. And I'll share I am. And then those that need to leave, I appreciate the time you've given. And those that want to stick around for a little bit longer, um, then I'll hang around for a little bit. And as you can see, my lovely creative cousin has put up some of the different links. I think the links will also go in the chat. And oh my goodness, I have to say thank you to my, my cousins who have co-hosted. There's no way I could have done this without them. Jacqueline, Rhoda, Maureen, thank you so much. Please show your appreciation for appreciation in some way. Um, because this would not have happened without them. Okay, here we go. Last Janice, just before you start, can I invite everybody to unmute so at the end of this that we can really show our appreciation to Janice for doing such a wonderful job writing the book and also delivering her poems today, oh, her poetry. Thank you. Okay, right, here we go. I am. I am. I am the struggle of my ancestors, the success of the seeds they have sown. In a land that was hard and unyielding, a harvest has come. I am a culture all my own, the amalgamation of the nations from which I have been birthed. I am an articulation of the past, present and future. I carry them within me. I am joy that has overcome sorrow. 
My pain will not define me, but I will not deny its part in my story. I am the reflection in your eyes, filtered by the features you fancy, mislabeled by the features you don't. Your miseducation of my history solicits silence to my story. I will not be silent. No, 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 she's a, I am a living yeah, hand. She's written a book. Painted oh, on. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can't see yeah. that. So, um, she's, she's in Indi she lives in Indonesia. She's really? Sorry. Sorry. This book in conversation, so I bought it. It's on Amazon. So she's doing like a little talk about how all these poems. Hold on a minute. One of the poems. Mute them. Let us hear Janice. Thank you. Right. I'm going to go from I'm a Living Canvas. It shows it's live, but trust me, guys, it's better than the rain that was falling earlier on. You would have not liked that. I'll go from your miseducation of my history solicits silence to my story. I will not be silent. <laughs> I am a living canvas painted on throughout the ages. Trace my lines, discover my brush strokes, consider the contrast of light and dark. I am artistry, lending my color to the world's tapestry. I am relevant, a defining presence in our changing world. I am here. Occupying fully the space I am in, running the race for others, forging a path for the generations to come. I am my own voice, needing no one to speak for me. I am. I am all the identity you need. I am. I am me. Thank you very much, everyone. Much love, many blessings. Thank you for joining me in conversation and good night. And to be loved. I love you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Celebrations. And then all the, the spontaneous songs. So as I said, um, I will stay on for a little bit. It's by myself. It's um, after nine here, um, which isn't too, too late, but, you know, I know there's some people who are on, it's a little bit late for them, so feel free if you need to go. But I'll stick around for at least another, like, ten minutes or so. So I'm going to stop the recording and um, for those that want to stick around and, you know, we might have a little chit chat, then I'm, I'm open to doing that. OK, so once again, thank you all very, very much in conversation. Hold on, stop the recording. Oh.